Praise God, everyone. Praise Jesus. Good evening, everyone. Today, Good evening, sister. We don't have sister Lisa for some work. She's uh, having some work, some commitment. So I'm going to make uh, Sister Sharka you the co-host. Praise Jesus. Praise God. Sorry, sister. I have made you the co-host. So uh, the scriptures will be sent to me, sister. Then I will be the yeah. one who will display. I will. I will upload. Yeah, I will upload the screen. Then you read them. Okay. Okay, sister. Praise God. Jesus. Jesus. So it's time to glorify the Lord. So whatever the experiences and the good things you have experienced through the love of Jesus Christ, it's time to share your testimony and give glory to God. You can unmute and share your testimony. Uh, Sister Clara, can I start? Sure, sure, Philomena. Yeah. Uh, this is again regarding my son, whom I always ask you to pray for him. Uh, he had got a job, I told you. Then he was terminated from his job. And then he was uh, without a job for a week and all. Then he told me, since this time, message to his without a job, what he'll do. Then he told me, rest. So within a week after that, he was called for a new job and he has joined over there and he's happy now. I give all my praises to God because he got a job, he lost it. And we were continuously praying for him so that he gets a best of job. Maybe the first job which he had got was not the best, but now what he has got is the best job. And I praise and I thank God that he's happy with this job. Praise Jesus. So... All glory to God, Philomena. See, it is uh, God blesses with best things, right? Because all yes. perfect and good things come from heaven above, and that is from the God of lights. Yes, sister. Sometimes what happens, we don't think it is the best. Yeah, he, he got a job to take care of his needs, but God wanted him to do something better than that. And there was a period of of testing his patience also, right? Yes. The patience. Yeah, first for more than a month and then for more than a week. Yeah, because now during this time, what happens? Are you blaming God or are you praising God? You can choose either, correct? Yes. You can either blame God for what he has lost, which is not from God, or you can choose to praise God so that it's not from God that he lost the job, but it is the enemy, correct? Right. So, praise God that he has got a job back and he's, um, he's, is, not, he's, depending he's, he's not depending on anybody. It's not depending on anybody. God has supplied all his needs. All glory to God. Yes, sister. Praise God and all glory to God. And thank you, sister. Because they have been my real support every now and then. I think, why he's not getting a job? What happened? What is the problem? Why his prayers are being not answered? Then I tell him, just go and find out. Go find out for job. But then you kept quiet. So even I kept my merchant. I knew you were praying. Even I was praying. So I didn't bother you again. I knew because your word says, now wait, you said rest means rest. Yes. He'll get it. Yeah. Praise Jesus. Yeah, praise God. And I want to ask you to pray for my daughter also along with all this because mm -hmm. she's waiting for the results to declare. It depends on the score. But uh, I said no score, nothing. She will get this place in Goa because I don't want to put her anywhere far off because it's a problem for me to travel from Goa to go anywhere out of Goa because I have a bedridden mother-in-law at home and one person has to stay back to look after her. So, because of that, I don't want her to go outside Goa, but still, I leave it in the hands of God. If God thinks what is best for her should happen in life. So, 
he will give the best because we are praying for all those children who have given their entrance exam for the college for getting the seat and she will get the seat in the best college praise god yes sister thank you kara okay so sister sharada you have any testimony today praise god praise god sister yes sister uh sister last time when you said uh the foundation built on uh, rock and the foundation built on uh, sand so i had to uh, ponder i had to say something on on the same day sister but uh, after discussion there was not much of time that's what i postponed for this this week sister if this is uh, if you want to continue on the same uh, word of god sister then maybe towards the end i will uh, tell that uh, how my personal experience how when i built uh, when i had to make major uh, life uh, decisions uh, sometimes uh, only word through word of god i could succeed so that time i felt that i have uh, built the foundation on rock uh, sometimes it is out of my own flesh out of my own personal desire sometimes it is because of a force from the family uh, so that is the time everything uh, collapsed so that time i felt that the decision which i took was like a foundation built on sand so the same thing i wanted to say last time two examples uh, but already time was uh, up and i couldn't uh, continue sister i couldn't share that and uh, one, one more testimony recently i had a severe throat infection and uh, 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 my nostrils were burning my sister in law also had cold and fever uh, my niece also was with cold and fever so i was thinking uh, that uh, uh, this is uh, because of uh, uh, the weather changes this is happening and uh, i did not go for any medication sister i only confessed uh, scriptures and uh, i felt better earlier i used to uh take uh, some kashayam some herbs i used to boil and i used to take sister but this time i uh, only with uh, by confessing the scriptures about uh, by uh, his wounds i am healed uh, only this i was confessing all through the next day i felt better sister but uh, my sister in law and my niece they had a couple of days they were suffering but i had uh, immediate recovery from her uh, cold and uh, throat infection sister this is how god has healed me uh, this previous week uh, this is my second testimony sister praise god praise jesus once we get into the word word is the medicine for everything for us because there is no other medicine greater than the word of god so many of us those who are in the word we avoid taking medicine because we don't need medicine it's not that we avoid taking medicine the moment we profess our faith through the word of god through the uh, promises that we have especially 1 peter 224 and we have learned how to rebuke we don't have to depend on anybody to rebuke our sickness or disease so yes, so it it we, it is so quick because the authority is given to each one of us unless we exercise the authority we will not that whether we are walk, walk a house is built on the rock a house is built on the sand praise god and for that you need to be very uh, very much rooted in the word you have to know that the word can do everything it is like you know 100% god dependent praise god yes sister i have a small testimony last week when well, i went with my children out and when we came home uh, in the kitchen uh you know we went we had gone for the grocery shopping and uh, we all came uh, in the house and we brought all our stuff up and we were just putting the things in the place and suddenly my daughter she the younger one she goes to the cook, uh, you know the cooking range that side and she finds some glass pieces on the floor and uh, praise god and uh, she's saying who broke the glass and none of us were at home and uh, 
So when I turned around, I saw there are a lot of pieces on the floor. It, it's uh, actually if all the three had to go inside without putting the light on, and uh, you know, some of, one could have stamped on any one of the piece, and you know, got would have got hurt. Uh, if nothing such happened, but uh, when my daughter saw, I said, nobody has broken the glass, but uh, let me go and see. I said, when I saw, uh, then I realized we had kept, uh, uh, you know, the, one of the herbs to grow in the glass, but I think the water got uh, dried up because of the heat in the country now. And uh, one of the cats must have gone up and the glass fell down and broke. And uh, it, uh, I just said <laughs> at that time when I saw everything is, and then I, of course, I took the broom and I cleaned it and all the glass pieces were collected. Uh, I praise God because uh, Psalm 91, God says, God has given us the angels of God, right? The angels, they will never allow a foot to dash against the stone. And none of us got hurt. They were scattered. The pieces were in the kitchen everywhere. That's not the place only where she saw. Pieces were everywhere, even where we kept our bags. Uh, and uh, we were, thank God, my older daughter had not entered the kitchen. If somebody had to go directly inside without seeing the floor, because normally we don't see, look at the floor when we when we are in the house. So, but everything was uh, like, you know, the angels of God had not allowed our food to dash against a piece of uh, glass, glass piece. And... Uh, I praise God and immediately the mouth, from my mouth came, thank you, Jesus, because everybody was saved. Praise God. This is one of the testimony I wanted to share today. Praise God. Yes, sister. Sister, added to your testimony about 91 Psalms, sister. This is the Psalm where I was uh, uh, like uh, first when I uh, came into Lord, sister, when I when I was attending retreats regularly, uh, when I had the thirst to know more about Jesus, that is the time this uh, Psalms 91 had helped me, sister. I went to a retreat there in uh, Mutangi and uh, one father named Father Jerry Sequera, Sequera was the one who was preaching. Uh, so many said that uh, this father, when he preaches, many will be touched. Praise Jesus. Praise God. Thank one, you, Jesus. Uh, one old lady was there, sister. Uh, thank you, Jesus. And that lady was, kept on saying, uh, oh, I'm a Hindu. I came here. I don't know much about Jesus Christ. I just came to know more about uh, uh, about your prayers and all. I don't even know. I don't even take ma this uh, communion. I just came to listen to the word of God, I said. Then uh, she told me, just uh, read Psalm 91. And I don't even know, sister, because I don't have Bible also. I don't even know that there is a, a scripture called as Psalm 91. So I just, when when uh, she told me, I looked at her blank and I just kept quiet, sister. But this was somewhere in my mind why this lady told me Psalm 91. Then after uh, my retreat on uh, fifth day, when we have to go, uh, go back, uh, that is the time I went to, into a chapel and uh, I there was a Bible, sister, and uh, I took the Bible and I just said, uh god i i came here as a guest i don't know about you uh i just came when people said that when you go to retreats you will find peace i came for that and i wanted to know about you more uh for that i have come to this retreat and uh, uh everybody says that uh, uh you will speak you will speak to people but how am I going to listen? How are you going to speak to me? I don't know. But if you are a true God, uh, you will speak to me now, now through this uh, Bible. Whatever you speak, you have to speak through this Bible because I'm I'm like a guest to your uh, to your place. I said, sister. Then when I prayed like this, and I was just my tears were running, uh, sister, because. Recently, I lost uh, my mom. That was in 1997. Uh, I lost my mom and uh, I lost my job. Uh, I don't have money. Uh, and my brothers and my sisters also, they, they didn't uh, 
uh, care about me. When I used to come once in a while to my siblings' place, they they just ignored me. So all this way to go, uh, I was in a confusion state, you know. So that is the time I said, only you can help me in this situation. Then surprisingly, sister, when I opened the Bible, it was uh, Psalm 91. What that lady said, that old lady, the same psalm came, sister. And as from the beginning to the last line while I was reading, sister, I, I felt that one sword was piercing my heart because all the fears and all my doubts have been clarified to, through Psalms 91. And uh, every time I used to have a, uh, this thing, a vision, sister, that I would meet uh, with an uh, accident and uh, uh, I would be uh, dead on the middle of the road or I would, uh, uh, I would get stuck in the traffic and I don't know how to go and some vehicle will come and hit me from all the four corners. So this was the vision and this was the thought always I was having because when my mother died, Previous night, she saw a dream that I met with an accident and I was in bloodshed. I was just, my two legs were broken and I was just lying on the road in blood and nobody and she, I was uh, uh, shouting for help, but none of the people were helping on the road. That was the dream she saw. And she shared this dream to, to my sister-in-law and she told, I feel my daughter is in trouble because of that I'm getting this dream. So when uh, I came to know that my mother expired, when I came, the first thing what my sister-in-law shared was this dream. The last time she draw, she saw a dream about you that you met with an accident. So I also was having this vision. Always I used to imagine this. And my mother also had the same dream. Maybe I will... Uh, I will uh, uh, meet with accident, maybe my legs will be broken. Maybe this is the reason why my mother also saw this dream. Then when I was reading that sister, it was uh, saying that even a night, you don't have to be scared about the night. And uh, the uh, sister, one minute, I would like to uh, read the Psalm 91, sister, one minute, sister. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Praise you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Praise you, Jesus. Psalm 91, sister. He who dwells in the secret place of the Most High shall abide under the shadow of the Almighty. I will say of the Lord, he is my refuge and my fortress, my God in him, in him I will trust. So this is the first letter sister sentence. Then I started crying. Surely he shall deliver you from the snare of the fowler and from the perilous pestilence. He shall cover you with his feathers and under his wings you shall take refuge. His truth shall be your shield and buckler. You shall not be afraid of the terror by night, nor of the arrow that flies by day, nor of the pestilence that walks in darkness, nor of the destruction that lays waste at noonday. A thousand may fall at your side and 10,000 at your right hand, but it shall not come near you. Only with your eyes shall you look and see the reward of the wicked. Because you have made the Lord, who is my refuge, even the most high your dwelling place, no evil shall befall you, nor shall any plague come near your dwelling. For he shall give his angels charge over you to keep you in all your ways. In their hands they shall bear you up, lest you dash your foot against a stone. You shall tread upon the lion and the cobra, the young lion and the serpent you shall trample underfoot. Because he has set his love upon me, therefore I will deliver him. 
disturbance went down. I will set him on high because he has known my name. He shall call upon me and I will answer him. I will be with him in trouble. I will deliver him and honor him. With long life, I will satisfy him and show him my salvation. Sister, this is how God has comforted me. Praise Jesus. And from then onward, sister, in all my sicknesses, even when this corona came also, sister, all my friends and colleagues, I used to stay in third floor, sister. First floor, all of them with COVID. Second floor, all of them with COVID, sister. And my car driver also, he drove my car and he also had COVID. And I did not get COVID, sister, because God has manifested this scripture that no this thing, disease will come. Uh, so this is what what it happened even during COVID time, sister. Not only that, sister, added to your testimony, uh, I was staying with a Mangalorean family sister in a uh, musket, uh, sharing accommodation. Uh, one day I borrowed their pressure cooker and I was uh, uh, the following uh, week, I have to start my 40 days of uh, Lent season uh, fasting. So I thought, okay, before that I will, uh, cook, uh, make lunch for my colleagues, I thought, and I I uh, borrowed their cooker, pressure cooker for uh, cooking mutton, sister. So while I was boiling mutton, I felt that this mutton is not sufficient. I'll put some more potatoes. Then I, I removed it. I put potatoes, sister. Again, I closed the uh, pressure cooker. That was 12 o'clock. I was cooking in midnight. And that is the time, sister, when I was standing there. If one whistle, I will put off the pressure cooker and I will go, I thought, sister. And I was there uh, standing. And there was one inner voice uh, asking me to move from there. It was kept on repeating, sister, again and again, move, move, she it was saying. Then I moved a little bit far, sister, two, two, two three feet, I went behind. And I was just waiting for the uh, uh, whistle. And that is the time again, the inner voice was again saying me, move, move. And this time with a great uh, intensity. Then I moved from the kitchen, sister, and there was a cooker blast. The cooker just went up and uh, this thing opened, the pressure cooker's lid opened and it fell and hit the roof. It came and it fell where I was standing in the second time I was standing with intensity, the voice came, move from there. So there, sister, that pressure cooker uh, lid fell and it, uh, the pressure cooker lid bro broke there. And with that, it was a blast and this Mangalorean family came and uh, what happened, what blasted, he, they said, and they came, they saw, and uh, all the mutton pieces and potatoes all over, even on the roof also, they went to sister. And it uh, it happened so miraculously, sister, there was a, a ceiling fan and there was a light and this, uh, the pressure cooker uh, went and hit in between the, the light and the fan. So that the fan was not, the, even if the fan was to hit and this uh, light has to be hit by this uh, cooker uh, uh, cover, maybe there would have been a damage all over. But only thing is, whatever I cooked, it fell on the roof and fell on the uh, floor, but nothing happened. Only pressure cooker was broken. <laughs> and that is the time, sister, this again, Psalm 91 came true in my place. So once... God uh, promises something uh, to our life, sister. Nothing, it, it will be forever. Forever it will, it will uh, manifest in our life. Though I thought that I was a guest to you, uh, God speak to me. But this Psalm 91, uh, uh, all through my life, sister, the whatever God has uh, said in this, uh, angels started protecting me, sister then uh, also there is no terror of night and no arrow that flies by day. No pestilence is coming to my, and I have seen thousand may fall at your side, 10,000 at your right hand, but it will not. And many times these dangers have happened, sister. Many of my colleagues also had uh, fallen into problem, but I was always rescued, sister. Nothing happened to me from 1997 till dated, sister. This uh, Psalm 91, has been assurance of God's protection. Uh, and uh, I really uh, couldn't stop uh, praising and thanking God for 
for uh, uh, assuring me with this word of God, sister. Praise you, Jesus. Thank you. Praise, Jesus. Praise, praise God. The Psalm 91, uh, it, is, it, it is important for every one of us to uh, speak in the morning and uh, at night. And uh, we have been doing, I have been doing all my life from the time I came to know. Uh, not even before, I have started this before coming into the world as well. So it has uh, protected me in my driving, in my at my workplace, in whatever you call it out, uh, God has been kind to me. It has also given the protection to my family. It's a wonderful psalm. And uh, other one is Isaiah 54 verses 15, 16, 17. I would encourage every one of you uh, to speak over your family these uh, verses. Psalm 91. Psalm 91 as it is for your family. And Isaiah chapter 54, verses 15, 16, 17. And uh, this gives the complete protection. Praise God. <clears throat> Thank, Praise you, God. Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Okay, since uh, let us now begin our uh, Bible session. Before we begin, I will just do a small opening prayer. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Thank you, Father God. Father, we thank you and we praise you. We bless your holy name. We bless the holy name of Jesus Christ. We bless the holy name of the Holy Spirit. Thank you, Father, for all the good things that you have done to us today. Thank you, Father, for all the brothers and sisters who are joined here. I pray, Father, that, that each and every one of us are protected with the precious blood of Jesus Christ, the blood that gives us the life, the protection, and the healing. Thank you, Lord. Today, whatever the words that the Holy Spirit shall give me, they, they shall be my words. For Lord God, Heavenly Father, it is you who is speaking through the Holy Spirit. Jesus, you came into this world by one man's disobedience. Sin came and one man's obedience the life came and Jesus, you brought life to each one of us today. When we are speaking about your life, your death on the cross, Jesus, we speak about our inheritance because you have made us righteous with the father in heaven. Thank you, Jesus, by your righteousness. Today we are made righteous and we are able to speak the truth, truth which sets us free in every area of our life. Thank you, Father, for all the beautiful testimonies that my sisters have shared today and we again bless your holy name father every every praise to your name alone thank you lord as i speak the word to my brothers and sisters i pray father that this word this seed touches the inner man of their heart and this this the seed turns gives life to them life in abundance father in the name of jesus i make this prayer amen amen and amen Praise God, everyone. Today, as I said, Sister Leone is not there, so I will be putting up the scriptures and Sister uh, Sharada can read the scriptures out today. So we were talking about building the faith on a solid foundation. Correct? Last, last time we were talking about that. So I will just put the scripture up so we can, we are continuing on the same thing. Matthew chapter 7, verses 24 to 29. Matthew chapter 7. <laughs> Let me share the screen. Give me a moment. Okay, so we were we were uh, talking about the house built on a rock and house built on a uh, sand. The house built on a rock means that you have laid a good foundation of faith. The house built on a sand means you are looking for the word, you are looking for a solution at the last moment, which means that you you have no knowledge about the word. You are in the world, but you are not in the world. And when you, how it, how you can make out that you are not in the world? Because when you harden your heart to the kingdom of God. And I told you all that there are four things we can make out from a person. That person has hardened the heart to the word of God or to the kingdom of God or to the spiritual world. That they do not see. They can't see the unseen. They are so used to believing what is seen by their naked eyes. 
second they do not hear the word is frequently spoken to them but their ears are deaf they do not hear what the word speaks they always can hear other voices that the world speaks then third one is they do not understand they see everything is happening good in their life but they do not understand it is coming from the love of god it, it is from god they and they only think that everything that is happening in their life because of their goodness because of the, what they have done that is their self righteousness then the fourth thing is that they do not remember you know when you sometimes you speak to the people the word of god unfortunately these people are after some time if you ask them anything they cannot remember anything whatever you speak about the kingdom they forget in a moment they back, go back to their old self they go back to the natural world the physical world they continue living in that same sinful life this is this is how we can make out whether you are in the world whether you are uh, in the world because it is uh, the if you are in the world you are only thinking or talking about the worldly stuff so have you heard some people saying that so much i make a like you know i have i have heard the people who are in the world and you know those who are the, the working for the kingdom the warriors they go and share the word of god to the people they give them the understanding with the scriptures but the person is not understanding the truths at all because now this person uh, i had one similar situation yesterday i spoke to somebody and uh, explained the uh, for about 20 minutes i explained to this person how this person has to go through about the problem that person has created ignorantly now today morning i'm receiving a call from the same person and the same person is repeating what happened yesterday so when i when we are spending time with the person giving the understanding uh, telling them not to speak what you see not to speak uh, what is contradicting to the word the person continues to speak and then person is saying that okay i did what you said but you did one time but you need to be very consistent in what you are doing because the word of god doesn't want us to speak the uh, you know the if you look at the bible bible does not teach us to speak what you see bible teaches us to speak what we want to see so this person again called me in the morning and saying da 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 i said see sister i have explained to you yesterday and today and it's not the first time that i'm uh, you know taking up this sister for so long she has been with me but when the situation arises in her life she her life is like you know her house is built on the sand because she is not really meditating on what i am telling or teaching her these are the people who you know the uh, this is an example how this person is falling under this four categories she does not see she cannot hear she does not understand and she cannot remember within 24 hours if a person is not able to remember this person is 100% in the world they want to see the result first but they don't you know then believe and that is not called faith i can tell you know somebody is sitting next to me if the person is there and if i say that i have faith because that person is sitting next to me that is not faith faith is i can say that when the when i saw the glass pieces i could, can say that angels of god protected us not to touch those glass because our foot or did not stamp on those pieces so i am so confident that no matter where i go they are there to protect me this is the faith even if i am sitting here on my right and my left i have the angels of god i can't see them but if my children are sitting beside me and if i say oh my children are sitting beside me i have 100% faith i can see them that is not called faith so that shows that you really do not know what is faith praise god so when you accept christ your heart is drawn to jesus every moment you know there is a uh, when we accept christ it's like a magnet you know the opposite force attract each other so our life becomes like that magnet we always you know we we are uh, now sister sharada has uh, uh, accepted christ and now she is so thirsty to know about jesus she wants to know who is jesus are we works in our life what he has finished on the cross what is my inheritance 
uh, how is it uh, how the promises of god work what is uh, you know uh, disciple retreat retreat how can i live my life on this earth so victoriously knowing jesus see this is this is how we are hungry so every time our heart is drawn to jesus every moment uh, we also when we are in this uh, uh, you know when we are experiencing this love of christ in us we want to see jesus with our five senses is it not sister shanga do you don't do you not make this prayer that i want to see jesus with my five senses yes sister yes but the bible says what is of the flesh is flesh what is of the spirit is spirit i will take you to john chapter 3 verse 6 john chapter verse 6 i will take you to john chapter 3 uh, then i will take you to 6 this was a uh, set to a uh, set to nicodemus by jesus it is not from somebody jesus himself is speaking to nicodemus jesus yes. is uh, read from fifth okay jesus answered uh, jesus answered no, most no, no, assuredly sorry. from three sister read from three from three sister jesus answered and read said to him read from three to understand it. from 3 yes jesus answered and said right. to him yes most assuredly i say to you unless one is born again he cannot see the kingdom of god nicodemus said to him how can a man be born when he is old can he enter a second time into his mother's womb and be born jesus answered most assuredly i say to you unless one is born of water and the spirit he cannot enter the kingdom of god that which is born of the flesh is flesh and that which is born of the spirit is spirit is god so Praise jesus god. is telling this to nicodemus nicodemus is who is he is a uh priest right pharisee name is a pharisee pharisee named nicodemus and is a ruler of the jews praise jesus so when he, when jesus tell him tell him that you cannot enter the kingdom of god unless you are born of spirit are we born of spirit are we born of spirit now yeah yes, when sister. we were yeah when we were born we were born from a mother's womb so we were born of adam but when we came to know jesus when we received jesus christ as a lord king and savior and that is the time we got baptized now baptism is not that you go dip somebody in the water and then you are baptized now if i am talking of the baptism when jesus died there were two thieves on his right and left right one of the thieves said that remember me in the paradise when you die remember me also so was and jesus says of course you will be in the paradise with me was that thief baptized did he go for confession no nothing by faith he was set free even on the cross even on the cross jesus accepted him he was a thief we don't know what kind of murders and what kind of theft he has and what what sins he has committed jesus did not ask him jesus did not tell go and wash yourself be, be cleansed be baptized then i will take you into the kingdom and i will remember you in the paradise no jesus on the spot said that you will be remembered you will be with me he said so baptism is not that you know many even i was thinking that i should be baptized because i am born again now but i once i understood this scripture uh, of that you know actually i was also pondering what i should go and back, get myself baptized then i will be washed of my past this that when i thought about these two thieves and one thief telling this to the, the to jesus and jesus said that you will be remembered in the you are uh, in the paradise you will be there with me and that made me to think twice so that means it is water baptism is not important but the spiritual baptism the holy spirit baptism which i have received is more important to me to be born again correct yes yes exactly yeah Praise so God. the your your uh, nicodemus was talking to jesus and jesus telling that what is born of uh, spirit is spirit and what is born of flesh is flesh now god did not give us the five senses to see god actually you know 
God gave us five senses to live our life in the flesh. If we don't have the five senses, how can we feel? How can we sense, correct? We have to have the senses. But to see God, but to see God, we have to use our spirit sense. We are supposed to see him through the spiritual sense. Now, five senses are given to us live in this physical world. We can communicate with God only through the spiritual sense. I, I always hear this uh, Sister Jocelyn saying that, you know, some people say that I heard the audible voice of God. God can never come and talk to you with audible voice because he's a spirit. Correct? Many people say I heard audible voice. Even I didn't hear the audible voice, but I always hear the inner voice. Like yeah, sister, sister. the same thing I was saying, sister, that inner Correct. voice. Correct. Your inner voice. There is inner voice. God speaks to you. There are always two voices speaking to you. One is the voice coming from the other side. and But the Holy Spirit helps you to discern which is the right voice. Because when you are confused, uh, the confusion comes from the Satan. And when you are not able to identify or discern the voice of the Holy Spirit, you are supposed to ask. Which, what am I supposed to do? Which is the right voice? So God doesn't talk to you in an audible voice. God speaks to, to you through your inner man, that is your spirit, through your inner voice. Okay? So the God is a spirit. So what is born of the spirit is spirit. What is born of the flesh is flesh. You know, the... Sometimes when we people say, uh, you know, I'm healed by the wounds of Jesus. Uh, for those who are not in Christ, those who are not operating in the spiritual sense. Does it sound like a lie? Yes, sister, because they don't know Correct. what it means. Yeah, because they don't know. One thing they don't know, they don't even know that it is written in the uh, Bible. And uh, we know because we have read it and we are practicing it now. Like before in the past, if somebody, if we, if we did not know and if somebody had to come and speak to us, of course, I didn't get this experience of anybody coming and telling me. But, uh, you know, we would also be uh, the, in the same category. We wouldn't believe. We say, why this person is telling lies? No, that's how the spiritual world works. So when the person is already in the spirit or who is a spirit man, he becomes so sensitive to that promise right we become now so sensitive we we know that this is the promise now when we speak to this promise again and again again and again again and again it gets downloaded in our heart that means it becomes flesh and blood of jesus christ and then we keep seeing the result so many times we don't see the uh, healing on the spot I don't say that, you know, healings do not take place on the spot. Healings do take place on the spot. But you still believe you are healed. And now the faith that you have in the unseen, in the unseen, that is by Jesus' wounds, you have, you have been healed. Before you were born in your mother's womb, becomes the flesh and the blood of Christ. And now you see the healing. Now, like, you know, it is like the, when you keep on saying, keep on saying, keep on saying. Uh, uh, for example, what I can say, like, you know, uh, there are times that when I want to see something, I keep repeating it my, in my mind. Now, somebody may say that you're uh, having mind gift. It's not mind gift. This is how the spiritual world works. In the physical world, we what we do, we see, we speak, and people want to see the results immediately. No, it is. Before you were born in your mother's womb, Jesus has already finished it in the cross, right? He has already finished. He has already taken every sin of yours every, in his uh, soul and every uh, sickness of yours and mine into his body. So that has to become flesh in you. That has to turn into the blood of Jesus Christ in you. Now, that is the time you keep professing that you keep repeating it, keep repeating it. And now you, when you keep repeating it, you see the healing on the spot. Now, this is for the people who are very new to the world. Uh, world. We tell them to do it again and again. 
but once you are in the word and once you you, you have developed or built your relationship with the father son and the holy spirit these things don't take much time correct you don't have yes. to hundred times you don't have to say 50 times you will see the result because you what you do is you harden harden your heart to the physical world the moment you harden your heart to the physical world you will see the results quickly praise god praise god Thank but if you see that now uh, i can even tell you this there are some people they want to see the healings on the spot and they see the healing on the spot now are you such people will they encounter god's presence or they will encounter preacher or the pastor's presence all the time if they see the healing on the spot they don't they don't encounter god at all because they say because you know for them it becomes like the other person is god correct yes because they saw the results on the spot i'm yes. not saying that there are yeah there are no healings healings do take place but the healings which they which takes place by your uh, by confessing the scriptures you mm -hmm. will you are so uh, you know you are so confident this promise works for me correct yes sister but if you see somebody just lays hand on you and you, he prays over you and you're healed now your faith is in the promise or or your faith is in that man of god or a preacher Earlier, it was like that, sister. If somebody uh, prays uh, over us and uh, if we are healed, because of their prayers, we are healed. Right. That. So we are then getting misled, right? So instead of depending on God and on his promise, we try to depend on somebody. If this priest prays over me, I will be healed. If this man of God prays over me, I will be healed. Only he has the power. That is how we used to speak, right? He has the power. I have said, I have said, when I saw uh, Brother Johnson, uh, you know, when he used to speak and I saw that so many miracles are happening and the people are falling down, uh, hands are growing, uh, the legs are growing long, hands are growing long. I used to think this man, I've said, and I've said from here sitting here and saying, oh man, this man has power. But as I understood the truth, you know, as I started uh, experiencing uh, or uh, rather uh, putting my faith into action, I saw, oh, this is happening with me also. But if, if only I had to depend on that person, then I wouldn't learn anything. I wouldn't grow in my spiritual life. Praise God. Isn't it? So it's all, it's all knowing about Jesus, what he has finished on the cross. And it is all about how you receive and perceive it in your spirit man. It is nothing to do with this man has power, that man has power. The power is inside of you, inside of you. Praise God. Now, I want to ask one question to you, Sister Sharada. Uh, you know, it is for everyone actually you can uh, reply in the chat box when before it rains do you see the black clouds she's not there okay so anybody can answer before it rains do you see the black clouds yes sister Please stop. Yeah, we see the black clouds. Praise God. After that, there are more indications, right? We see... Yes, thunders, lightning. lightnings. Lightning, then it yeah. pours. Yeah, that is happening right now here in India. Now. Correct. It's, the, it's the, before the rain, there is a sign. Yes. Now, when we see this sign, do we sit at home daytime or forget at night? Night, we are, anyway, we are happy when it rains daytime if you are at workplace or at home do you sit inside you don't sit inside correct if you have to complete some job if you have to go somewhere in the neighborhood or you have to go and fetch something you still go out right you still go out but yes. how do you go out either you carry an umbrella or you will take a raincoat yes correct we still go out in that thundering and lightning we are not scared correct 
because yes. I remember when we were small, uh, uh, we, uh, you know, my dad was a forest officer. He had a central government job. And my mom, uh, you know, to support my father, we, uh, we were many girls uh, and two brothers. And uh, we had a huge plot and we still have that. And the mummy had started with the flower business. We had flower business. We used to pluck the flowers and uh, make all those whatever we were, you know we used to do. And then we used to give it to the mar in the market. Mummy used to go and give and come. And those ladies used to sell. But during the rainy season, even if it is if it is raining, if it is thundering, lightning, we had to wear our raincoat and go and pluck the flowers in our chair. Hmm. It is raining, it is thundering, but we had to go out and pluck the flowers from the garden. It's a huge garden. We had mogras and all. It's a, a it's you know, just to pluck the mogras, it would take one to two hours. So we all had to do this. And okay, that is one. And we had to go to school. How? My our parents did not say that today it is raining outside, sit at home. We had to wear, wear a raincoat, take a school bag and if there is no raincoat we had to take the umbrella and the umbrella is to go to all different directions with the wind correct those who are from india they will know how they have you know how they are brought up when they were small so this is this yeah. was a lifestyle because what we were prepared our parents had prepared us even to walk in that storm in that wind in that rain praise god it's beautiful, yes, sister. It? That's what that EDM came, no, sister. Rain or shine. Rain or shine, we have to do certain things. Mm -hmm. This is the EDM. So, uh, however, the season is that uh, season should not stop us from doing the things that are in, uh, uh, assured for us. Praise God. Yeah, because the season. Uh, we will not stop, nor the season will not stop. So it is all mm -hmm. our mindset. Correct? Yes, Same sister. way, when we have storm, be still and be calm. And now I'm talking about the storm in our real life. So even when the storm comes in your life, the Bible says like, you know, don't fight flesh, but, you know, because the, when we are going through the spiritual uh, warfare, it is not a fight with the flesh our fight is with the spirits and how do we fight the spiritual warfare by and using the armor of god yeah how do we fight yeah. the spirit yeah how do we fight we fight it with the promise right yes now for example uh i'll take you to 1 peter 3 9 okay 1 peter 3 9 Okay, read this one. Yes. Read. Um, not returning evil for evil or reviling for reviling, but on the contrary, blessing, knowing that you were called to this, that you may inherit a blessing. Wow. What yes. we do? Praise God. If somebody says one, we give them ten. Yes, sister. If somebody is insulting you, we will insult them more. Exactly. So the Bible says don't repay evil with the evil. On the contrary, we have to bless them. And if we bless others, we will inherit a blessing. It is very difficult, no? Because this happens every day in our life. Yes, sister. You know, in our home, at work, in the neighborhood. Now, this is a small storm. Now, what about the hurricanes in our life? Hurricane is huge, right? Yes. So, if you have learned to be calm in this small storm, you will know how to handle the hurricane in your own life. Correct? It's a yes, 
small small things what is happening in our daily life is a small storm <clears throat> small one but the hurricane comes it is so wild it's violent it's very violent now when the hurricane comes if you are prepared with 1 peter 3 9 in your small storms you will learn it will take you to the next level that's the hurricane and that is the time what you do that is the time we have to put the armor of god yeah. correct the armor of god you will put only when you know how to cover yourself in this such a small rain in this such a small wind in such a small storm then you will know how to face the hurricane in your life and now you are prepared with the armor of god even i did not know i thought this small storms you know will help me and uh, when the hurricane came in my life i was also shaken a bit not much but i was shaken a bit and that's the time the holy spirit spoke to me it's the time for you to put the armor of god and that's the, that's how when i put the armor of god i felt wow this is nothing that means when the small storms come in your life you have to be very cheerful because these storms will take you to the next level unless you experience any trials in your life how do you want to get promoted to the next level you have to get promoted to the next level in the spiritual world so that you will rise like a uh, in, uh, you will rise up in the sky like an eagle you will then once the storm comes when the hurricane comes when you have the armor of god you will fly in the wind in the high sky like an eagle without any fear praise god without any fear praise god praise god so, praise god I will take you to Ephesians chapter 6, verses 10 to 18. Armor of God. Okay, read, sister. Finally, my brethren, be strong in the Lord and in the power of his might. Put on the whole armor of God that you may be able to stand against the wiles of the devil. For we do not wrestle against the flesh and blood, but against the principalities, against the powers, against the rulers of the darkness of this age, against the spiritual hosts of wickedness in the heavenly places. Therefore, take up the whole armor of God that you may be able to withstand in the evil day and having done all to stand. Stand therefore, having girded your waist with truth, having put on the breastplate of righteousness and having showed your feet with the preparation of the gospel of peace above all, taking the shield of faith with which you will be able to quench all the fairy darts of the wicked one and take the helmet of salvation and the sword of the spirit, which is the word of God, praying always with all prayer and supplication in the spirit, being watchful to this end with all perseverance and supplication for all the saints. Praise God. Praise God. Praise Jesus. See, Praise uh, Jesus. Uh, St. Paul is writing this to the Ephesians. And the whole armor of God is, speaks, say, is saying that put on the whole armor of God that you may be able to stand against the wiles of the devil. He did not tell against the wiles of the people, correct? So yes. it is nothing to do with the people because he says we don't wrestle against flesh, flesh and blood, but against the principalities, against the powers, against the rulers of darkness of this age against the spiritual oath of wickedness in the heavenly places. Now, heavenly places is, uh, you know, what are heavenly places mean does the spirit realms that we are surrounded by, okay, which yeah. we cannot see. 
Mm-hmm. Now, sometimes we uh, people may say heaven in the heaven also there are spirits. No, it's not the uh, talking about. The, there are three. Um, I I think I have uh, spoken last time once before. There are three uh, heavens, and uh, you know there are the, the the last heaven is where the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit. There are heavens below that, and in this yes. this heaven. The, even the one, the spiritual, uh, the physical world that you and I are living, we are surrounded by the spirits. Now, these spirits are without body. You and I have a body, but these spirits, we are fighting against the uh, bodies, uh, the spirits without body. We can't see them because we have body, we can see each other, correct? Yes. Now, so these spirits are there around each one of us. Everywhere they are, <clears throat> we can't see them with our bare eyes, but we are surrounded. So the Paul, the Saint Paul tells us that our our fight is not with the uh, flesh. So when somebody is com- coming against you, it is not the flesh of that person or the person in flesh coming against you. It is the spirit who has taken control of that person and that person. Uh, the spirit in that person is coming against you. You are getting it? You are understanding. So yes, we, we, our fight is never, never against a, a person in flesh, but it is against the spirit which comes into that person and that spirit comes against us. That is the that is how the enemy, the Satan, uses people. So that is the time you have to take up the whole armor of God that you may be able to withstand in the evil day and having done all to stand. Now, if an army person goes to fight without the armor of God, will he survive or will he die there only? Sister, sometimes if we, if we don't answer them back, sister, they, they take us for granted, we think, and we answer them back, sister. But actually, to have all this, to put the whole armor of God, it, uh, it we cannot do with our uh, natural ability, sister. Only the Holy Spirit can give us that patience to handle uh, such uh, situations and uh, with uh, people. See, we think like that, sister, that if I don't give them back, they will not, not understand. But if you depend on the Holy Spirit, <clears throat> he will guide you. He will guide you. To say what is the right word to them. Yes, sister. Sometimes when I was in my experience, personal experience, sister, my sister-in-law, you say something. If I don't uh, answer back or if I don't explain to her, she will think that because this is this was her mistake. That's what she kept to quiet. In certain occasions, I kept to quiet, sister, thinking that okay, whatever I say, she will not understand. But for that, she she was instigating all the more by saying, because this is her mistake, she kept quiet. Otherwise, she will not keep quiet. So this this is how, again, second time, you, uh, I will feel that uh, she should not think like that. So I try to explain to her. But those days, I used to be a little bit rash in explaining. But nowadays, after uh, uh, coming into God, I try to explain with examples. But even though she will not uh, be satisfied about the way I explain, but still I feel that this is my responsibility to make her understand, sister. And she is also in 70s. So she doesn't uh, have the that ability to understand whatever we are saying. So she has her own fixed uh, mindset, sister. What can we do? That is her ma- That is a age problem also, I think, sometimes. Yeah, so it is your sister. It is not uh, that because she's not understanding, because she's there, or she will think uh, this way, that way. So it is all in our mindset. But uh, when once you are in the world, once you understand the world, how you have to live your life, you will get uh, because uh, still you're still learning. Once you yes, learn sister. how to be exactly. in the world, you will even this thought which you have right now will vanish will vanish. Yes, sister. And such situation will not take place in your life. I'm telling you because. I am experiencing this. I am experiencing. That's why I'm teaching. <clears throat> because here in Ephesians chapter six, it says that we have to wear the belt of truth. Okay. Yes. Now, when I say it, whatever you are seeing, the belt, the truth is what you see temporary, and it seems it is a uh, like now. 
truth is permanent, but what you see is temporary. What you see, what she said, or what he said is all temporary. Keep in mind, okay? Because yes. it is the theme of the devil, but you do not see it is permanent, and that is your victory. You got it? You yes, do not sister. see it permanent, but that is the victory of, you know, when you know that this is what is coming against me is temporary. When I say yes. belt of truth, if the, the St. Paul says you have to wear the belt of truth. Now, when I say belt of truth, you need to understand one thing very clearly. This is what I'm, I always say this, where whatever situation you may be in or going through, it's all temporary. It is yeah. all temporary. But you can make it permanent also by dragging it up. By dragging it. And that is the scheme of the devil. That is what he wants. Now, Paul has written in 2 Corinthians 4.18. We can see there. One second. 2 Corinthians 4.18. Okay. Read this. While we do while we do not look at the things which are seen, but at the things which are not seen. For the things which are seen are temporary, but the things which are not seen are eternal. Praise God. Is it true? So yes, yes. when you see something, somebody is not agreeing with you, and when you have the truth, this is the truth. The things which you see are temporary, but things which are not seen are eternal. So the things which you see, and if you want to drag it for two months, three months, two years, four years, it's up to us, right? But when we know that the truth, truth shall set them free. And when we stop that subject, stop that matter on that moment, and when we let it go, and when we depend on God, the same person will come to know one day I was wrong. He'll say I was wrong. It was my fault. And this has happened yes. with me. This has happened with me. People have realized uh, what was the truth. What is the truth? Because I did not go to defend. I did not go to fight. But when they came to know, they themselves came forward and they said, you were right. We were wrong. Now, I learned this only through the word. I did not learn this outside the word. Before the word, I was also thinking the same way. I was, I was also carrying out the things for ages. Ages may say two, three years, not for 20 years, 30 years, but I would say that. That, would, that whatever they created would linger in my mind. Praise God, because 1 Peter 3, 9, very clear. Do not repay evil with evil or insult with insult. On the contrary, repay evil with blessing. Because to this you will call so that you may inherit a blessing. So you need to understand. And also 2 Corinthians 4, chapter, uh, chapter 4, verse 18. Now we read, why we do not look at the things which are seen. So yes. this is temporary. Whatever we see, it's all temporary. Because everything will subside on its own. And this is the truth. Now, what's the truth? Truth is that the situation will not last more than it will. Now, if I'm giving an example, can a pot or a bucket hold water above its brim? No, it overflows. It will overflow. Same yes. way. Whatever the situation it could be, whether it is sickness, your financial situation, any kind of afflictions in your life, if you have obeyed Jesus' teachings, and if you have made a commitment to obey his words, you will definitely say the truth will set you free. You know, many times what Christians do is, instead of obeying the truth written in the Bible, they want to obey what a religious person or a man of God or a woman of God has said. They want to obey what others say. Go read your Bible. It is Bible is very clear. Bible is telling you everything. It is teaching you how to live your life victoriously. The promises are amazing. Keep them in your mouth. 
keep them in your mouth when you, uh, you know when i read the promises before i have to think that we should not highlight the bible anything in the bible because it's a very holy thing but now i started i started highlighting the verses that which touches my heart and at times when i don't want to read anything and when i just open the bible i find these these verses coming up so that i can open my mouth and speak praise god what joshua 18 says what joshua 18 says what sister joshua 18 it says joshua 18 i'm putting one second meditate on the word day and night so with you yeah. this book of the law shall not depart this book of the law shall not depart from your mouth but you shall meditate in it day and night that you may observe to do according to all that is written in it for then you will make your way prosperous and then you will have good success praise jesus sister i praise jesus sister sister i have one doubt sister sometimes uh, accusations about our own if some outsiders are accusing our own uh, and it is actually not true but uh, is it wrong sister if we try to defend them and say that that is not true what you are saying Uh, is that uh, oh, no according to word of god we are not supposed to do that sister wait i will tell you here something happened with my own life okay yes sister i don't know whether i should say but i i will because you have spoken i will speak it today it so happened with me my husband is here i don't know oh one second I didn't check one second, but it should be here. If he is, because he will agree with me, whatever I'm speaking. I wanted to say yes or no, Joseph, at the end after I speak. There was a great accusation on me and my husband few years back. Okay, we did not do anything wrong. This is in within uh, inside our family, and uh, we were accused. We were accused. even at that moment we did not open our mouth even we did not open our mouth we did not go to justify and we knew that we were not wrong even after that we when uh, first when we said that it is we, we did not do this this thing kept on accusing us and it went for years it went mm-hmm. for uh 18 19 20 21 22 23 almost 6 years went on but the same people who accused us came back few days back or i can say a week ago and that same person said i am sorry your name was spoiled for no reason and mm. we are sorry for what we have done you were right now in this all six years i did not want to justify i did not go to justify because one thing i know that i will trust in god and those days i just got into the word and how my mouth was uh, you know uh, zipped that i will tell you later on because when we go to justify and when we go to show that i am right you are wrong you are right i am right or uh, you are wrong i am right all this you know this will only create more and more bitterness in the family or in a in the circle correct yes sister so i we uh, we both we both did not speak about it neither we we did not speak even that day not after that but this was going on on our back relationships were sorry but we did not give it to anything what was happening on our back even when somebody the, when i got into the word the first thing that came bombarding my mind the thoughts were that one this did to you this 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 one did this to you this one this and i said to the person when the person called to say sorry to me i said actually when i got into the word these things came back to my mind which was you know my mind was shut to this this uh, this incident but it came it started reminding him reminding me and at that time 
I came to know this is the work of the enemy. It is the scheme of the enemy. I immediately set a weight, set in weight. My Jesus, what he has finished on the cross is more than anything what these people are, have done to me because he has forgiven my sins on the cross and what these people have done to me, nothing. My Jesus has done greater things than what anybody could do for me. Nobody would do. And when I said this, no, after a while, these thoughts again started disappearing. It, now this person did not come to apologize immediately. See, it took years. But what has made that person to apologize? The truth. The truth in me today, I am for Jesus. I live for Jesus. So that truth has set that person free. And yes, that person was then that person was asking me, how can I get out of the situations of my past? So I said the same thing. Whatever I said that, you know, this thought, uh, I gave a little understanding to that person. In fact, I spoke, uh, shared the word of God for 50 minutes with that person. So yes, you don't have to go and speak to them and show and prove that you are right. Did Jesus prove on the cross that he was right? Did he do anything so wrong? Bottom line is, uh, instead of justifying uh, or defending, it is uh, better to uh, surrender the situation and the uh, people to God. And uh, he is the one uh, who will uh, bring changes in the situation. Am I right, sister? Correct. Because, see, you are right. I'll tell you what. See, we have one judge. Yes, we sister. are not supposed to judge anyone. If somebody is judging you, let them judge. It's none of your business. Are you judging them? Then you will be judged. If you are judging others, it's written in the Bible, right? Do not judge others. But if you judge them, you will be judged. I'm not judging anybody. But somebody is judging me, let them judge. I want nothing to do with them. Because I have a greater judge. My judgment and my witness is my father God. You understand? Yes, sister. This is what I told them also. My witness is my father God. Joseph, are you there? Did you listen to this? Yes, sister. So Bye. through this conversation, sister, God has enlightened me not to be judgmental uh, because uh, most of the time I have this judgmental attitude, sister, to tell you the truth. Mm -hmm. uh, sometimes I try to defend. Sometimes I try to justify uh, things. Uh, and uh, I I feel that uh, whatever I am doing, they have to accept because this is this is the truth, and uh, they are all always having false uh, notion about these things. I try to prove uh, that I am right, and I try to justify, and uh, at times I become judgmental also. So all this in through this class, sister God is uh, just convicting me that uh, to to give up all these ways of mine and uh, just uh, put on the armor of God. And uh, day to day, I have to fight the battles uh, through by giving up my pride or my judgmental attitude instead, uh, depending on God and surrendering people and things uh, uh, for him to judge. But I am no way uh, have the right to judge someone, sister. Praise you, Jesus. Praise Thank God. You, Jesus. See, uh, we don't have the right to judge anyone and we don't have to justify because God is our judge and God knows exactly what is in your heart. Okay, God does not see our actions here. He will not see our righteousness, but he will see your heart. Okay, we are not righteous because what we are doing. We are righteous because of the righteousness of Christ. Uh, yes, of God, not because of us, because what he has finished. If Jesus had to defend himself on the cross, today you and I would have been in the hell. There would yes, not sister. have been heaven for us. Correct? Exactly. Yes, so yes. we have to be careful to do everything written in the Bible. You know, we but we are in hurry. Always we are in hurry. Bible says to be careful, but we are careless. Correct? So we speak yes, yes. what comes on our way immediately. Tuck, tuck, tuck we give. And we feel that we have done something great. And that's yes. actually pride. You know, yes. uh, the Bible says it's in a uh, book of James, the God resists the uh, pride and uh, humbles the 
uh, exhaust the hum, uh, humble. Okay. Yes. Yes. So humble one. So it is you. We have to know. So we have to. Uh, you know. Sometimes people think, okay, I have won the battle. What is? What did uh, the Satan thought when Jesus died on the cross? When he crucified, he thought he, thought he won the battle. He did not yes. win the battle. Correct. Yeah. It is like you yes, know, uh, it's a foolishness. It's a foolishness. And you know what happened when I got into the word? I'll tell you this. This this word I got afterwards. Actually, in the uh, same no same time, I think I got the word same year, two thousand eighteen. I got this word, and I wrote this word in my uh, book. I used to write the you know, whenever I used to get something very nice. I used to write, and but I wanted this word to manifest in my life. Uh, it is in Psalm 140, uh, 41, verse 3. 141, verse 3. This is, you need this verse. Everyone needs this verse. This has taught me a lot. Okay. Such a simple word. Just see. This. Set a guard, O oh Lord, over my mouth. Keep watch over the door of my lips. Yes, Isn't Jesus. it a beautiful word? Yes, sister. Now, those who have problem with their <clears throat> speaking, those who cannot control their tongue, please keep on saying this word. Psalm 141, verse 3. Yeah, Set a guard, O oh Lord. Keep on uh, confessing. Yes. Maybe we will uh, overcome our... Uh, this judgmental attitudes, maybe. You know, or answering back. This is such a simple. Yeah, this is such a simple scripture. You can imagine. You know, it took a lot of time for me to download it in my heart. Yes. Now, when sister. I say download it in my heart, means it to become flesh. It took time. Now somebody will say it is such a simple word. Few words are there. How you cannot memorize? No, I could memorize the word. But I could not, I could not put into practice because yes, I sister. was thinking the same way what you were thinking, that I'm speaking the truth. Yes. Okay. To me, the truth is what I see, what I feel. I'm not lying because if I felt that I'm, if I don't speak, they will not understand. They will not get corrections in their life. Correct? Yes, sister. And that was the biggest problem in my life. So... I started learning this scripture by heart. But once this truth got downloaded in the chip of my heart, I learned how to zip my mouth. When yes, I want sister. to open my mouth, as of today, if, you, if I'm telling you, even if somebody comes in, argues, want to argue with me on a Bible, I will not open my mouth. Even if I know the truth, I will not open. The reason yeah. this scripture has taught me so much uh, you know uh, i was put into di different situations recently about the uh, about the promises of god i have every every promise in my heart but i could give it to that person ta 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 i i could give it's there it's stored in my heart the yeah. if you if you tell me that you no know, god and god said in the for example i'm just giving you i will not tell the whole conversation if the person is saying that God will heal you. That is what God said in the Old Testament. I have the scripture. God has healed me. Correct? I have the scripture. God yes. has healed me. But I'm not yes. talking about this. This is something simple. There were some other things. Everything is in me. But I wouldn't open my mouth. The reason the moment I, if I open, people will start debating about it. Correct? Depending yes, on the it. truth, it's not yeah, right. Yeah. Understanding the truth is more important for you and me. So when yes. the time comes, we can tell that person, say, this is the truth. So I remain silent. Then I ask the Holy Spirit, and uh, why did I not speak? I have everything. He said, okay, I sealed your lips. I sealed your lips. Because if you open your mouth, it will lead to argument. Argument is a spirit. It's not a yeah. good spirit. Do you want to be in the bondage of bad spirits? Never. Never. Then, don't lead your words for argument. You know they are wrong. 
let them be wrong now you yes. give it to the lord lord enlighten their mind to speak the truth and to know the truth and truth shall set them free yes they will come back to you now this is my personal experience yeah word works any time every time every time it is the same yesterday today and forever the facts may change let's pray jesus yes facts may change so every time i used to think like you know i know everything and i used to come home and then i used to speak to the holy spirit so holy spirit said no i sealed to the doors of your lips finished so i have learned through the holy spirit by confessing this these uh, promises and they do work even in proverbs 13:3 uh, the same thing is written i will uh, take you there proverbs 13:3 because this any verses which is having number 3 they are very powerful Proverbs 13:3. 13:3. Yeah, read this. He who guards his mouth preserves his life, but he who opens wide his lips shall have destruction. <laughs> yes, yeah, sister. So you got the two promises. You got two promises similar yeah. to your situation. Yes, sister. Is it a wonderful sister? Yes, yeah, sister. Praise God. And we have the promise in Hosea chapter four six. I will not put there. It says, "God says, my people are destroyed because of lack of knowledge." Yes. And Proverbs eighteen twenty one says, "Our tongue has the power of life and death." These are all interrelated. Yes, yes. So wealth of truth is nothing. than the meditating on the word of god do we meditate on the simple word of god that we read today yes sister it's very important so to meditate so solution for every problem and answer for every question is there in the bible only thing is we need uh, guidance of holy spirit uh, to understand the word in depth sister sometimes we read the word uh, yeah. i mean especially i read like a story but in depth when you explained all these uh, proverbs and psalms and all i really think oh this is how it is it was written so the inner meaning is this but all the all these scriptures i know but i did not understand all these days the inner the depth of this uh, uh, scripture system only now i understood Praise Jesus, because praise Jesus. Uh, yeah. Uh, praise Jesus, sister. Uh, before Proverbs eighteen eighteen twenty one, which scripture is said? Can you please repeat it? Proverbs uh, only some scripture is said, no, regarding. Osiah, Osiah chapter four verse six. And one more scripture yet said, I think. Proverbs, Proverbs thirteen three. Proverbs thirteen three. Ah, okay, okay. Okay, thank you. Praise God. So Praise God. everything begins with Jesus. So everything begins with words. Everything begins with our tongue. Correct? Yes, sister. So the you know when we start meditating on the word of God, now somebody will say that array outcome. uh you know she was saying that like for me for me i i said that you know the some 141 was three they set a guard or oh lord over my mouth keep watch over my the doors of my lips i used to say jesus just shut my mouth <laughs> just shut <Yeah>. my mouth <laughs> because your word says and i want just shut my mouth and it happened it started slowly 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 the holy spirit started teaching me he started teaching me from home at my workplace and uh, the biggest miracle that took place in my own place with my siblings and i just did not justify to anyone anyone and the time came after such a long period of time the people coming and saying sorry for this incident which took place in my place at my place it was mm -hmm. we were not we were not the uh, reason and the apology comes after 6 years long 6 years so somebody would say like if i was not in the word i would say 
you people did ta 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 that day now you are coming and say i could use my own words right yeah. i still have a choice to do but i will not choose anything which is contradicting to the word of god what jesus has finished he has finished once and for all for each one of us if he cannot remember anything why should i remember what happened 6 years back or 10 years back or 20 years back praise jesus am i right yes sister praise jesus that's why uh, you know these days when you all come for the tongue session first thing i tell that uh, i tell everyone forgive everyone don't keep anything in your heart if jesus has forgiven us on the cross let us not remember anything what what has happened in your life because yes. it's you cannot stand before the father god son and the holy spirit with with a heavy heart nothing can work not a single prayer will be answered so live your life with freedom that god has given you through the word praise god praise god sister are you enjoying <laughs> praise god so what happens is with most of us we speak the our words and we forget god's word what is written in the bible we do not want to we do not want to apply in our life whatever you have stored in your heart will come out of your lips no because we have not learned to put a guard over our mouth we have not learned to seal the doors of our lips Yeah. so today every but every one of you everyone who is here who have not practiced this put it into practice praise god so praise god so the next one is breastplate of righteousness now are you righteous are we righteous we are righteous we are the righteousness of god in christ jesus jesus has made us righteous not our works okay he has finished so i don't have to fight the devil in flesh but he comes to fight me in flesh correct jesus was crucified in flesh you know uh, i have given this uh, testimony a uh, long back that when i was sleeping there was a cloud above my stomach it was moving around dark cloud and i could feel i could sense my my stomach uh you know the my flesh my stomach or the i could sense it i could sense it it was the dark cloud and mm-hmm. when my spirit woke me up this was around uh, 2:45 a.m to 3 a.m in the morning mm-hmm. and when i when i my spirit woke me up mm-hmm. and what did i say i said only one word i am the righteousness of god in christ jesus and tuck it disappeared mm-hmm. the next word i said jesus i want to sleep for me to now when i had this nightmare of enemy's attack okay i said after the attack i said jesus put me to sleep i fell asleep immediately but if i had to linger with those thoughts or had to get scared about the situation what happened to me the same situation would have occurred next day because if i had not used the word of god at that moment now when i said i am the righteousness of god in christ jesus the enemy had to flee because he understood who i am in christ when he came to attack me he came to attack my flesh did he come to attack my spirit no he cannot touch it so he came to attack my flesh correct okay? i replied to him in spirit and truth because i was sleeping my flesh was sleeping but my spirit was awake so whatever was stored in my spirit come out that is the truth the truth is i am the righteousness of god in christ jesus so jesus has defeated the enemy we have to understand this jesus has defeated the enemy but he has not destroyed the enemy is not destroyed he is still ruling he is truth is still around us imagine a person doesn't a person is sleeping and the person does not the doesn't know the truth then what would happen what would happen that person would go in fear game over of that person but if you have the truth in your heart if you have stored the truth in your spirit now when you are sleeping when the satan is attacking you on uh, your flesh but your spirit speaks 
the spirit takes over. Now the game over of the Satan. Praise God. Correct? Yes, sister. Your Sometimes when here. I get nightmare, sister, I say Jesus. Yes, and immediately I open my eyes, sister. Many a times it happened yes. to me. Now, why, why you, when you say Jesus, your eyes are open because there is power in that name. Yes, the sister. Name of all names. Above, above all names, yeah. All the powers Jesus. under in the in heaven, on earth, and beneath are under his is, is having the authority over all the powers, and everything is in him. Whatever we are, uh, you know, uh, the word Jesus is so powerful. Anytime yeah. I, if you do not know any scriptures, also use the word Jesus continuously. Yes. Enemy will flee. Praise yes, God. Sister. Praise so God. the rest, rest, rest of righteousness is that you are righteous. Now people will say, armor of God, what I will put that one, that, 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 that. No, it's nothing like that. It is that you are using what you have learned, you are putting into, you know, it's an application. You understand? Yeah. You are applying yes. it in your life. Praise God. Now we yes, we have next one is shoes of gospel. Shoes of gospel, of peace. Now what is gospel all about? Word of God. Word of God. And it is all about how you can live a peaceful life, no? Yes. It only brings peace to each one's heart. It doesn't show violence anywhere around you. But if you see someone has preached the gospel and you see there is no peace within your heart and in your own home, then that person has not preached the gospel of peace. That person has preached the gospel of destruction. Yeah. Praise God. Nobody can yes, preach. We, we, we have heard the gospel of, uh, you know, grace, gospel of peace, gospel of abundance. But I've seen very few people preach the gospel of destruction in your own home. That means that gospel is preached, that gospel is preached to pe people only for their own benefit. Yes. You got it? Yes, so yes. you need to be now you need to be vigilant you need to be vigilant all the time you need to understand yes. if i am if i am going to hear so and so place and if i don't see the peace through the gospel why it is happening i have heard the, the word but this is not bringing peace in my heart this is not bringing peace in my home so what did i hear the gospel is the same but the same yes. gospel is preached in a different way yes you understand? Yes, sister. See, for me, whenever I hear the gospel, I hold peace in my heart. Did Jesus give us peace? He gave us peace, yeah. What yes. kind of... Uh, if you look at uh, John 14, 27, I always go by these two uh, verses in my life and I don't see peace in the situation. I use this and I see the peace immediately. John 14, 27. I do live my life with the word as of today. I live by it. Peace I leave with you. My peace I give to you. Not as the world gives do I give to you. Let not your heart be troubled. Neither let it be afraid. Praise Jesus. Praise Thank Jesus. you, Jesus. When your heart is troubled, you are afraid and the peace is gone. Correct? Yes, sister. Then there is one more. I I give you another scripture. I use that scripture as well. Uh, that is Philippians four seven. Uh, let me type here. Philippians four seven. This is in my office. I put it there, and I say yes. first thing in the morning. Yes. And the peace of God, which surpasses all understanding will guard your hearts and minds through Christ Jesus. Praise Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Praise Jesus. Praise you, Jesus. These two scriptures, I want you to download in your heart today. Jesus. Whatever I've taught you today, all of you, you know, yes. you need to count them in your heart because this, are, this is very important for us in our daily life. 
Yes. John 14, 27, I made it one day when I got this, when I was reading the Gospel of John, uh, I got this uh, promise and I wrote it again. And I learned this by heart. There are some uh, scriptures of Joseph and I, my husband, would write, I would write, and in the evening we would learn them. Learn them in the sense we keep on say them. Okay? So they became part of our life. It's confessing so the scriptures. Yes. So uh, we would say five times or seven times or ten times maximum. So they became part of our life. And they, when, as you keep saying them, uh, as you keep confessing them from your mouth and our yes. tongue as the power, so it produced good harvest in our life. And it helped me a lot uh, in my relationship with the Lord uh, because, uh, you know, that every day there is a storm. Every day there is a wind coming through. Uh, hurricanes are coming not every time. They come at a certain point of time. But the storm and wind was there every day. And they were heavy in the beginning. Okay. It came, then it became little less. But suddenly a big hurricane came in my life. But that's the time God showed me how to use the armor of God. That is what I am teaching you so that, you know, let our house be built on the rock. Yeah. You know, the four Gospels that we have, when we read them, it brings so much of peace in our heart. Have you, uh, you know, when a person reads and even, you know, one full Gospel, for example, if you have read Gospel of Mark one time, and you will see so much of peace, so much of peace. For me, like every time I read the gospel, I am like at rest. I am at total rest. Because even that whatever the demons hidden inside of my body, they get away from my body. Hidden demons. Yeah. Praise Jesus. We can't yeah. see. this. We are living in a world where we are covered, we are surrounded with the spirits. Yes, correct. correct. And if you don't have peace, then you are into pieces, correct? Yes, sister. <laughs> so remaining in peace or speaking peace over the situation is very, 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 very important. Six years back, I did not have these two scriptures with me. I didn't know how to bring peace in those areas where I would see the situation getting worse. But today, the moment it starts, I speak this and I see the peace of God. Praise God. Praise God. Thank you, Jesus. I, I still have to, uh, still more. I have still more to finish this. We will finish it today. Okay. So the Sister, next one about is, the foundation of rock, foundation of sand. Yeah. It's the same thing. It's connected to that. Okay, sister. It's the same thing. I'm how you can build your foundation on the rock. On rock. Oh. This is we all are we when you put the armor of God. Yes. So the next one is shield of faith. What yeah. pleases God? Faith, correct? Yes. God can be pleased only with faith. And what is faith? Faith is the substance of things to hope to for the evidence of things not seen. Correct? We want to see something we can't see, but we still hope that it will happen, it will come to pass. By, uh, you know, it's in Hebrews chapter 11, verses 1 to 3. Yeah, read it. Now, faith is the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen. For by it, the elders obtain a good testimony. By faith, we understand that the worlds were framed by the word of God, so that the things which are seen were not made of things which are visible. Praise Jesus. Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Faith is the substance of things hoped for, evidence to things not seen. By if the elders obtain a good testimony, now are the elders, like if you ask about Elijah, if you ask about Abraham. Abraham, Father Abraham was one of the best uh, example in the Bible, correct? In the Old Testament. 
he only walked by faith. If you have not read, sister, please go and read about Abraham, okay, in the book of Genesis. So by faith, we understand world, worlds were framed by the word of God. God just created the word, uh, world, gave shape to this world by faith, by speaking. He did not see everything. When he saw the darkness, he did not see, oh, this is darkness. He spoke light. Correct? By faith. So make a small faith prayer with the word of God and not with your word. So by faith you have to do. Now faith prayer can be, you can do always with Mark chapter 11 verse 24. It's a promise where God says, when you pray, believe you have received it. It, it did not say that you will receive it. Believe you have received it. Praise Jesus. Now, how we receive? Because of the finished works of Jesus. Jesus has finished everything in the spiritual realm. Now, when you are born again, one which is in the spiritual realm, it is downloaded in your spirit by faith. Because Jesus has paid a ransom to get our inheritance, which was lost in the Garden of Eden. Now, how do you get that everything in your spirit? Just by believing. By faith. Now, faith is believing in the unseen. Yes. Now, when God created the world, he believed in the unseen and he called it, called everything from the unseen to the seen. Correct? Yes. He just believed. He made everything out of nothing. Yeah. So, and the same power is in you and in me after Jesus resurrected, after Jesus, what he has finished on the cross, the same thing is said in the spiritual realm. Now, it is you, take it. Because the moment you call it in your spirit, it's already there in your spirit. But we need to activate it. We activate it by faith. Praise God. Praise God. So that is shield of faith. Now, the other last one, the sword of the spirit. Now, what is the sword of the spirit? The meaning of sword of the spirit? Word the of word of God? God. Yes, the word of God. A word of God is required in each one's life. Yes. Because each piece of armor has a distinct purpose, correct? Yes. And meaning of defense against the wiles of the enemy. Now, the word of God is very, very, very important. It's the most powerful tool in our life. And this is the sword of the spirit. Yes. Now, many times what happens when we are in the storm, we are not able to get a particular scripture or promise. That's why I say, even when you say, thank you, Jesus, so yes. your work is complete. Yes. You know, when uh, uh, this is uh, uh, also, I've given the testimony of uh, now it's, uh, I think, uh, four, uh, four or five months or uh, yeah, less than that. When one car overtook my car in the single lane and uh, when I saw the car overtook and I, I got, a, there was a noise, a kind of noise when it overtook. Nobody can overtake and it's the miracle. It's the greatest miracle God has ever done in my life. And yes, there is, I, nobody can imagine or think about it. And when the car went and stopped right in front of me, and uh, he would have gone into the parking lot, nothing, but he stopped. But I did not go home, catch him, nothing. I waited for him to go. But when I saw that car, overtook my car and went and stopped, the first thing I said, we are dwelling in the shelter of the Most High God. Again, Psalm 91, yes. okay? Yes, yes. I said this. Now, how did it come to my mouth? Because it was already stored in my heart. It was stored yes. in my heart. And I said, thank you, Jesus. The next, then I said, how did this guy come? Next question. But the first thing, what came out of my mouth, we are dwelling in the shelter of the Most High God. This is what I told my daughter. Even, yes. when, the, even when the evil was pouring over my stomach at night, the word came out of my mouth when I was in my deep sleep, when through my spirit was, I am the righteousness of God in Christ Jesus. Correct? Now, yes. when I saw the glass pieces, few days back on the floor 
And when our food did not stamp it, I said, thank you, Jesus. I said, thank you, Jesus. Yes. And then after that, the word came to my mind was again from Psalm 91, the angels will not allow a food to dash against the stone. Correct? So yes. all of this is stored in my heart. And much more than yes, this. Jesus. Now, your foundation comes from the truth. Now, don't yes. go with the crowd saying that I listen to this teaching, I live for 16 hours, 18 hours. But what is stored in your heart after listening to the teachings? Exactly. Have you exercised your faith at the time of your storm? This is the question. Yes. Is your house built on the rock? That is the most important thing. The parable of the house built on a rock is warning to each one of us. This is a warning given by Jesus himself. Yes. We all think we are spiritually blessed. I can do this, I can do that. But when the storm comes, how you react to it or how you respond to it. Reaction comes from the Satan. Response comes from the word. There are two differences. You understood? I said react and respond. Reacting to the situation that comes from the enemy. Responding comes through the word that you can take complete control of that situation through the word of God. Yes. So, foundation of the house, like if you want to build a house on the rock, the foundation is not laid during the monsoon or storm or during the wind, correct? Yes. It has to be laid during a sunny day. Yeah. Right? Appropriate season. Ah. So you lay, each one of us should lay a foundation on a foundation to build a house on the rock when the situation is good. When the situation is good, correct? Yes. So when the situation turns bad or when storm comes, hurricane storm, then you can use, you can, you can, uh, you know, be a firm with your faith foundation. You will not be shaken at that time. Yes. So today I want all of you to, those who are listening to these teachings, I want you to go and write few things. Is your life is only listening to the teachings for hours and hours? Did you build your relationship with the Lord? Did you open the Bible and read it and meditate on the word of God? Did you ask the questions to the Holy Spirit to open up the word, to reveal it to you? Did you allow the God to speak to you or only you're speaking all the time to him? More importantly, obedience. Are you obedient? To the words spoken by Jesus in the Bible. Now, when I say the obedience, it's exactly what you are you are doing. Exactly what is spoken by Jesus, what is written in the Bible. If God says, "Wear the shoes of peace," don't go to buy a pair of shoes. You just be quiet. Don't open your mouth. Keep your mind free from worry. Just meditate on what is spoken in the word. If you don't bring back the word that you have meditated upon, that is in your heart. Bible says that I have to wear the shoes of peace. The peace comes from Jesus. Am I having that peace in my heart right now? If I don't have, speak the truth. Open the Bible, John 14, 27, read it. Ephesians 1, 3, read it. You will see everything coming to pass because what you see in the scene is temporary. But what is in the unseen is eternal. What you see yes. in the scene will subside. It will go away. It will fade away. Yeah. But God's word is forever. It is the same. Because I, it's written in the Bible, I think it's in the Psalm, I don't remember. The word says that 
that you know we uh, we are like heaven, heaven and earth shall pass away but my word shall not pass yeah no there is one word we are like grass and flowers Gra uh, grass and flowers grass. will fade away yes uh, because god has breath life in it but his word will not fade away it is eternal yes. so it yes, is yes. eternal you know when when you read the uh, verses i i will tell you very simple way to uh, memorize the uh, scriptures when i read the bible when i the moment i like that word i stop there i keep on speaking the same verse over and again mm. and now it has become so simple for me i don't even have to do because the holy spirit is so quick that he downloads in me quickly i say two three times it is done in the past it was not like that as to forget why because in my upper floor the upper floor my brain quarter kg brain was filled with so many other things yes so i had to delete some of the files now the now the space is there files are deleted correct yes so i made space by deleting the old uh, you know the whatever was happening in my life what happened now there is lot of space now the things are not like before now when i read the bible when i understand and uh, the understanding also comes quickly i only ask the holy spirit teach me all things teach me all things even when i read the bible the, the you know that scripture is a Uh, not for uh, the you know teach me all things and bring all things to my remembrance for so ever Jesus has said unto you. It's not only for some situations; it's all the time. Teach me all things, help me, the spirit of wisdom and knowledge, guide me, lead me. Because sons are led by the Holy Spirit. I'm the son. Mm -hmm. You're the son. You're born again. I'm born again. So mm -hmm. we have the same, same. Uh, uh, you know what you say? Our inheritance is the same. Hmm. We don't have a God is not partial to us. Is same to each one of us. Is love for each one of us same, unconditional, agape love. Hmm. So, every one of you, meditate on what I have spoken today. How to build your faith foundation? How it's built on the rock. Hmm. How it's built on the rock is how it's built on the word of God. How it's built on the sand is. I was built on the worldly desires. Yes. Okay. So you need to build your house on the rock in a sunny day. Don't go in the monsoon when the rain hits. Don't go and build the walls. Correct. Yes. We can't build the walls when we even when we go when we there is rain when we have the signs of rain when we see the clouds. turning black when we go out we make sure we carry everything for a protection so before yes. the cloud be prepared praise god thank praise you god. thank you jesus i believe you all learned many things today yes sister any questions yeah isaiah 40 was a the grass withers and the flowers fall but the word of god endures forever praise jesus praise to jesus anybody has any questions please ask because uh, this one i close today here next week the topic will be different Okay. If you don't have anything, I will close this Bible study today. Praise Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Father, I thank you and I praise you. I love you. I worship you, Lord. For I honor you because every word that I have spoken today is through the through your mercy, through your grace. And thank you, Holy Spirit, that you have spoken through me. And every word that has gone out of my mouth is the word of God. I have not spoken anything. It is what I have spoken is beyond my imagination. But Holy Spirit, you have given the perfect word. I thank you, Father, that you have edif you through me you have edified your people. And I thank you, Father, that 
if when we see any situation, any storm, any hurricane, any wind blows towards us, Holy Spirit, enlighten our mind to put the armor of God that we may always walk in peace, the peace that Jesus you gave us. And we may always put a guard over our mouth and close the doors of our lips that we may use them only to glorify you, sing praises to your name, and to edify others. Thank you and praise you, Father. I thank you for blessing each one of us here today, for giving the spiritual food for our spirit. And I thank you for the nourishment that we have received today and the increase that we have received in our spirit through your word. In the name of Jesus, I bless the holy name of the Father. I bless the holy name of the Lord Jesus Christ. I bless the holy name of the Holy Spirit. Amen. 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 Praise God. Thank you, everyone. Praise for God. Praise God. See you all for the uh, session. Good night. Good night, sister.